Okay, so this video is going to be talking about um, power supplies and something called internal resistance. So my first question is, what is a cell? So actually, um, this picture here is of a cell. Um, normally, this is um, what we normally call an AA battery, is an example of a power cell. Electrical symbol for a cell is something that looks like this. That short, thin leg, sorry, short, fat leg is the negative terminal, and the long, thin leg is the positive terminal. A battery, on the other hand, is multiple cells put together in series. And the symbol looks like that. Um, so what do these do? So essentially, um, within this, there's a store of chemical potential energy. And when they're plugged into a circuit, there's an energy transfer that occurs. That chemical energy gets transferred to electrical energy. And that electrical energy could be used to do work. Um, okay, so um, if I was to cut one of these open and look inside, what would we actually see? So I'm going to draw a little very simplified diagram here. Oop, not like that. So within this um, within this cell, one end, I'm going to have a what we call a cathode. So this could be made of a certain metal, for example. Lithium might be an example in your phone. And that is actually the positive terminal of the battery. The other end is what we call an anode. And that's your negative terminal. Now these two electrodes are going to be se separated by, um, could be an electrolyte, or might be a sort of polymer separator. Essentially, the key idea here is that this allows ion exchange between these two ends. Now, we don't really need to know much at all about the um, internal chemistry of these things. Um, but the key thing is um, that due to these sort of internal chemical reactions, we get a buildup of electrons at, electrons at the anode. At the cathode, on the other hand, we get a deficit of electrons. So we've got a electrochemical potential difference between these ends. Um, there's, there, there is some sort of force which is actively pushing the, those electrons due to these reactions to that um, right-hand side. If I were to connect this up in a circuit now, well, these electrons, there's a potential difference between this end and this end. Um, so these electrons, if, if it's connected up into a circuit, would start to move in order to balance that charge. And this is, um, this is what we call a current. So we're going to come back to this idea of this force pushing those electrons to the other side in a, bit, in a minute. What I'd first like to talk a bit about is two types of cells. So first is a primary cell. Um, our AA battery being an example of one of these. The key thing here is that this internal chemical reaction is non-reversible. So um, once these have been used once, um, they're useless, they can't be recharged. And that's what we call a primary cell. So these alkaline batteries or zinc carbon batteries would be primary cells. In contrast to this, the batteries you've got on your phone, clearly when the battery's um, running out at the end of the day, you plug it into the wall. And what's actually happening is you're drawing current from your mains electricity, which is being used to reverse that chemical reaction. So electrical energy is being transferred back into chemical potential energy within that battery. Um, so this is what we call a secondary cell, a re rechargeable battery. So lithium ion batteries, similar to what you'd have in your phone, or lead acid batteries, which you might find in a car, are examples of secondary cells. Okay. So going back to this idea of the internal forces pushing those electrons over to the right hand side. So this is essentially giving those electrons potential energy and causing this potential difference between the negative terminal and the positive terminal. So the word for this is called the electromotive force. So this is what we can think of as the um, potential difference of a power supply. So it's us giving those electrons electrical potential energy, which they can use to do work within a circuit. So my definition, definitions here in blue 
The electromotive force, or EMF, is a term used to describe the energy transferred to electrons um, by a power supply. And this is measured in volts. So um, if we think back to our definition of voltage, it's the, um, in a circuit, the potential difference is the work done per unit charge. So as the electrons move around a circuit, if I just draw a very simple circuit here. So as my electrons move around this circuit, well, in particular within the bulb, they are doing work, they are losing energy, um, which is what we call the potential difference across that bulb. On the other hand, um, so I could measure here the potential difference across that bulb. On the other hand, up here, well, when, when they get back to the cell, they gain energy, gain electrical potential energy, which they then use to do work within the circuit. And it's this gain in energy, which we think of, which we call the EMF. And I've just given you the symbol there. It's a Greek letter epsilon. It looks like a sort of curly, curly E. So this is your EMF. And you can kind of think about it like the voltage of a power supply. In contrast to this, I just mentioned the potential difference as I mentioned here, is used to describe energy transfer from the electrons. So they're doing work as they move around this circuit. Okay, so um, something to think about here. I've got this simple circuit here. At the moment, I'm going to have a certain EMF of my power supply. And this resistor, sorry, this um, light bulb has a certain resistance. So at the moment, um, I can measure the current through that ammeter by finding the EMF of my cell divided by the resistance of that light bulb. So what my question is, what happens when I close that switch? So I'm going to have a, essentially, a short circuit here. So no current will pass through that bulb. So what would the reading on the ammeter say? Um, well... Once I've closed that, I have no resistance because that bulb is no longer in the circuit. So I have that EMF divided by zero. So dividing by zero error, um, what does this actually mean in reality? Clearly, mathematically, that means infinite current. Now, in reality, of course, that can't be the case. So where are the sources of the resistance within this circuit? So you might think, OK, well, we've talked before about ideal and non-ideal non ammeters. This ammeter might have a small resistance, um, certainly. Um, but let's say we, we would take that ammeter out of the circuit as well. Then would we have infinite current and the cells melting, the wires melting away? Well, of course not. There might be a certain amount of resistance within the wires. Absolutely. Um, but the biggest source of resistance within this short circuit is something that's inherent within this power cell. And it's something we call internal resistance. So this cell itself will have a certain resistance. OK, so it's what we're talking about here. Um, the in Some of the power delivered by a cell is dissipated in driving current through the cell. So if you have a um, battery connected to a circuit, that battery will get hot as it discharges and delivers current throughout the cell. We can think of this as the resistance of the contents of the cell due to these internal chemical processes we talked about before. So in here, in, uh, in purple here, I've got this little diagram illustrating how we normally represent this. So um, this dotted box around the outside, we can think of this as the cell itself, but within it, well, we've got a source of EMF, that's this cell, but then it's got this internal resistance within it which which is inherent to it, we can't get rid of it. So epsilon is our EMF measured in volts and small r is the internal resistance measured in ohms. And we can treat this as if it was the um, if it, as if it was a resistor within a circuit. Okay, so let's take a little look at this example here. 
So I've got my um, cell, and if we remember, this dotted line represents the, the cell itself. It's got its EMF and it's got its internal resistance. So I've connected this cell in series with a variable resistor that I can vary between 1 and 9 ohms. So um, let's take two examples. So let's say R equals 1 ohm. And then the second one we're going to look at is when R equals 9 ohms. What we're going to do is we're going to look at these, these values V1 and V2. So V1 is the um, potential difference drop across that variable resistor. And V2, um, we can't actually measure this directly in reality because clearly that voltmeter is connected within the cell itself. Um, but for the case of this example, let's imagine we can. So that V2 is going to measure the potential difference drop due to the internal resistance. So, for example, 1, if R equals 1 ohm. So basically, my circuit, I could simplify it to look something like this. I've got this 1 ohm resistor. in series with a second 1 ohm resistor with an EMF of 10 volts. So if we think back to our circuit rules, what does this actually mean? Well, that 10 volt EMF um, is going to be distributed between the potential difference drops within the circuit. And as they have the same resistance there, V1 will equal 5 volts and V2 will also equal 5 volts. Now, on the other hand, what's going to happen if we increase this variable resistor up to 9 volts? So I've still got these, this 10 volt EMF to distribute throughout the circuit, but there's going to be much more energy dissipated by this 9 ohm resistor. So if I look at that example, well, in this case, V1, there's going to be a much bigger potential difference drop across that circuit, sorry, that resistor. V2, on the other hand, will be much, much smaller. So we can see, as we vary the circuit resistance, the potential difference drop across due to the internal resistance also changes because of this, um, this all comes down to Kirchhoff's voltage law, essentially, the drop in, in potential difference throughout the circuit. OK, so how can we actually use this to measure the internal resistance of a cell? So I've got a little diagram here illustrating a typical setup used to calculate internal resistance. So what we've got is very similar to what we had before. We've got this variable resistor, which is given a symbol capital R. We've got an ammeter, we've got a voltmeter, um, we have, and we have this dotted line representing our cell with internal resistance. So what I would like us to think about is, um, firstly, let's consider our Kirchhoff's voltage law for this setup. So if we remember, the sum of my EMFs equal the sum of my potential differences around a closed loop. So clearly this is a uh, series circuit, so we've just got one possible loop. So my first EMF is the only EMF source within my circuit. So let's follow this around. I'm going to have a certain current moving throughout this circuit. So we'll call that I for now. Once I get to here, I'm going to have a potential difference drop across this variable resistor. So what's the size of that potential difference drop going to be? Well, it's going to be the current times whatever that resistance is. If I keep going through, well, we'll assume an ideal ammeter for now, so no potential difference drop there. When I get round to my variable, so to my internal resistor, I'm going to have another potential difference drop. So the size of that is going to be given by I times that internal resistance there. Okay, so I've got a little equation which we can use to work out a bit about um, internal resistance. So first thing I want to talk about is this guy here. So that is going to be the potential difference measured by this voltmeter. Now, I just want you to take a minute to just compare that voltmeter in that position there and a voltmeter in that position here. Now, 
these will measure should measure in theory the exact same potential difference it's the potential difference across the terminals of that cell obviously we're assuming an ideal voltmeter here and an ideal ammeter um, but in each of those positions they will measure the um, potential difference across the terminals so this is often called the terminal potential difference so that is literally, if you connected a voltmeter across the terminals, um, what would the um, what would it read? Sometimes you might see V circuit written there, the potential difference drop across the circuit, same thing. So I've got a little equation here, which is what we actually use to calculate internal resistance. Okay, so we're just going to make a note of what all our variables stand for here. So we've got E is my EMF measured in volts. V term. It's what we call the terminal potential difference. Or again, the potential difference drop across the circuit. And we've got I, which is my the current in my circuit. Or in particular, the current through the battery. And R, little r, is my internal resistance. And just for completeness, big R is often the circuit resistance. So it doesn't need to necessarily be one um, variable resistor. In this case, it could be a whole the resistance, combined resistance of all the different things you've got in your circuit. Okay, so um, in terms of an actual experiment to measure internal resistance, there's a, um, you would use this exact setup. And what we're going to do is we're going to plot um, current in your circuit on the x-axis and the terminal potential difference on the y-axis. Okay, so let's go back to this example here just to look at what we had. So when this resistance got very high, what happened to my circuit current? Well, I'd have a very low current and um, a higher terminal potential difference. So I start off with a low current and a high terminal potential difference. Um, when that circuit resistance was much lower, well, clearly I had much more current flowing in my circuit and this value was also lower. So if I plot this graph, what I actually end up with is something that looks like this. So I've got a straight line with a downwards gradient, um, which we've described using this equation in blue. So we can be a bit clever about this. We can use our um, equation for a straight line, y equals mx plus C, and we can do a bit of graphical analysis to work out how we can find um, our internal resistance. So let's have a look. On my y-axis, I've got my terminal potential difference. So I'm going to rearrange that equation in terms of that. On my x-axis, I've got current. So I'm just going to write that as And my, in this case, my um, intercept will be the EMF. So let's um, look at what we've got here. Well, clearly we just said my Y axis was my terminal potential difference. My X axis was the current. So what does that mean? Well, that means that my um, intercept here is actually going to give me my EMF. On the other hand, my gradient, we can see I've got a negative gradient here, will give me the internal resistance. So this is a set setup we can use to actually find the internal resistance for a, um, for a component. And typically for different um, components, you might find values between half an ohm or, or a couple of ohms. 
generally quite small, but if the circuit resistance is uh, a comparable size, then it can be significant. Okay, so to finish up, I've just got a couple of questions here. If you're, um, I'd pause the video here if you want to have a little go at these, then I'm going to talk through them. It's question one. An AA cell has an EMF of 1.62 volts. It's connected in series with a bulb of 12 ohms. The potential difference across the bulb is 1.52 volts. It's my advice with this sort of question. Always, always, always draw yourself a little diagram. Okay. So we're talking about a cell with internal resistance here. Connected in series with a bulb of 12 ohms. Okay, so let's put some labels on this. We said we've got an EMF of 1.62 volts. Here we've got a potential difference drop of 1.52 volts. And I've got a resistance here of 12 ohms. And then I've got this unknown here, which is my internal resistance. So for part one, what is the current flowing in the circuit? So there's, um, the best way to do this is to look specifically at the bulb and this part of the circuit here. I know what the potential difference across that bulb is. I know it's resistance. So I can use a bit of Ohm's law to work out, well, what is the, um, current through that bulb. Um, so I'm going to do 1.52 divided by 12, which should equal about 0.13 amps. So through my bulb, I'm going to have a current of 0.13 amps. As this is a series circuit, we know my current is going to be the same all the way around. Okay, so for part two. So what we can do, we know we've got a EMF here. I'm going to have a potential difference drop here and a potential difference drop here. And this is essentially what I did in the last part of the video. We said, well, my EMF will equal whatever this voltage drop in my circuit is going to be plus I times R. OK, well, using the, putting some numbers to it now, we're going to have, what's my EMF? We said already it's 1.62 volts. Um, what's the potential difference drop in the circuit? 1.52 volts plus my current times R. Bit of rearranging there. I should end up with 0.1 divided by 0.13, which should equal about 0.7 9 ohms. So that is a way that we can use to find out what is the value of the internal resistance of my cell. Okay, question two. A little bit trickier now. So again, start with a picture. So we've got a cell with an EMF of 9 volts and an internal resistance of 1.3 ohms. Um, this is connected in series with a non-ideal ammeter. So basically, I'm going to treat that as a resistor. Um, non-ideal ammeter, an ideal ammeter has zero resistance. A non-ideal ammeter will have a certain resistance associated with it. Um, so let's put some numbers to that, um, some values on this. So my EMF, we said already, is nine volts. My internal resistance equals 1.3 ohms and we're going to have a certain resistance associated with that ammeter. What other information are we given? Well we know the current in my circuit or the current read by the ammeter equals 1.7 amps. So that's going to be the same all the way around. So um, what is the terminal potential difference of my circuit. Well, let's, in order to answer this one, let's get my equation back. So what we're looking for is this value here. If 
we put some numbers to this, I've got 9 volt um, EMF equals this unknown, which we're not sure about. That's going to be the potential difference drop across my ammeter. Um, plus the current, which we said is 1.7 amps times my internal resistance, which here is 1.3. So with a bit of re rearranging, I should be able to find out that my terminal potential difference is 6.8 volts. Okay. So how can we use this to work out the uh, resistance of my ammeter? Okay. Well, again, we know my potential difference and we know the current through it, which is this value in green. So I can work out using Ohm's law, what is the um, resistance of my ammeter? So it's going to be the terminal potential difference divided by the current through it, which will equal 6 point eight divided by one point seven which should equal four ohms approximately so that is the resistance of the ammeter okay so let's have a little go at question three now how much energy is transferred from chemical energy to electrical energy by the cell in two minutes so what does this actually mean so we're talking about this transfer from chemical to electrical. Well, that's all essentially what the EMF of the cell is. So if I use my equation for electrical power, P equals I times V, I can work the I can work out the rate at which energy is transferred. So to put some numbers to it, um, my current is 1.7 amps times my EMF, which is 9, which gives me a power of, oops, 15.3 uh, watts. If I want um, to work out how much energy is dissipated, I need to use my equation for linking energy, power, and time. So I'm going to have my power, 15.3 watts, times the number of seconds I've got which should give me my total um, power dissipation of 1,840 joules. So that's how much energy is tr um, transferred into electrical energy from chemical energy by the cell. Now, part four, how much energy is dissipated as heat by the cell in two minutes? So very slightly different question here, but um, different ideas that we need to get across. So here, because I'm talking about dissipation, we're looking specifically at this resistance here. This is the energy transferred by the electrons as they move through that resistor. That's going to be dissipated as heat. So the best equation to use when we're talking about energy dissipation through a component is a variation of P equals IV, substituting in Ohm's law there. We end up with P equals I squared R. Plugging some numbers in here, we're going to have my current through that internal resistor squared times the value of that internal resistance, which should give me a power of 3.76 watts. In two minutes, again using the same equation as before, we're going to have 3.7 watts times the amount of time, which should give me 400 and 51 joules. Um, so I've got these two values here. Um, th so this 1,840 joules is basically the energy, electrical energy um, transferred by the cell. Some of that is lost across this resistor and some of that is lost due to the internal resistance. So the difference between these should be the heat dissipation caused by that, um, by the ammeter in this circuit. Thanks for watching.